Christian Craighead, Obi-Wan Nairobi. It was a warm, sunny Tuesday afternoon, and everywhere people are window shopping and exploring the grounds of the Ducid D2 luxury hotel complex. Located at 14 Riverside Drive, the hotel was at the center of many expensive stores and international office buildings. The Kenyan Commission on Revenue Allocation, INM Bank, Amadeus IT Group, and a host of other businesses dotted the Walden property. For years, this complex in the capital of Kenya had peacefully operated as a host for tourism and international business. That was all about to change on the afternoon of January 15th, 2019. As people sat outside the Secret Garden restaurant, which was just opposite the Ducid D2 Hotel, a man approached and stopped directly in front of the patio seating area. He was speaking very loudly on his cell phone, attracting the attention of everyone in the restaurant. Where are you? He screamed in Swahili into the phone. Some of the customers sitting there began to feel uncomfortable and anticipated that something bad was about to happen. The man's erratic behavior caused an unnerving feeling of suspense. Moments later, the man detonated a secret explosive device located on his body and instantly killed himself and many of the nearby customers. Windows six stories up from the blast were shattered and debris was strewn across the grassy lawn. As the smoke cleared and people ran for their lives, no one could have guessed how deadly the rest of the day would become. Around the same time, at roughly three o'clock in the afternoon, four more armed men drove to the entrance of the compound. At the security gate, the guard's suspicions were aroused and they fired some warning shots at the vehicles. The four men were forced to abandon their vehicle and continue up the street on foot. Approaching the front gate, they threw hand grenades at vehicles parked outside the entrance and three cars exploded into bright hot flames. The purpose of this second explosion was to create chaos and confusion within the luxury complex, making people become disoriented and easier to trap. After a brief skirmish with the front gate security, the attackers forced their way into the complex. These men were wearing black apparel, carrying assault rifles, and had a lot of extra ammunition magazines with them. Clearly, the attack was coordinated beforehand to cause as much devastation as possible. They split into two groups of two and began systematically moving through the office buildings. Shooting and throwing grenades as they moved up the floors, the group killed anyone that they came into contact with. Kenya is no stranger to terrorist attacks. Ten minutes into the attack, dozens of security personnel began to arrive at the front entrance. Police special forces, paramedics, and armed civilians raced into the complex to begin helping evacuate the panic-stricken crowds. Among those helping was Christian Craighead, a British SAS soldier who was in the country to help train Kenyan soldiers to fight against terrorist attacks. For Craighead, the day had started normally enough. He was shopping at the mall when he received a phone call that there was an attack at the hotel complex. Immediately, this British SAS soldier, who was a member of the elite 22nd Regiment, grabbed his equipment and ran to his car. Weaving in and out of traffic, he pushed his way through Nairobi and toward the Ducid D2 hotel compound. Hey everyone, do you want to fly through the skies in a Messerschmitt? Well, now you can. You know, when I'm playing War Thunder, it feels like I'm in the middle of a real battle from history. There's over 2,000 incredibly detailed vehicles from across 100 years of land, sea, and aerial warfare. They've all been modeled down to their individual components, and you can pick and choose your favorites. You can even customize each vehicle with tons of options, like camouflage, unique skins, and historical markings. Reenacting historical battles has never been more realistic, because War Thunder has painstakingly modeled military vehicles from the actual models as references. With 4K graphics and intense sound during the PvP battles, I really can't get enough of the realism that they put into this game. It even tells you which parts of the enemy vehicles are damaged. To play War Thunder for free on the PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, sign up using the link in the description below and receive a massive free bonus pack, including a ton of premium vehicles, boosters, and access to a premium account model, and more. Leaving his vehicle, Craighead could hear the sound of automatic gunfire, and although he had little intel on what was unfolding, he knew that many people were in danger. His training in the British Army had prepared him for this sort of situation. Christian Craighead had joined the Junior Parachute Regiment before his 17th birthday, and trained with them for six months before moving on to the program for adult paratroopers. Pegasus Company, also known as P Company, is a pre-parachute selection course that takes place over a five-day period and entails grueling training. Not many pass the course, but those that do have the chance to continue on to the parachute course. 
After graduating from training, he served for three years as a paratrooper before joining the Pathfinder Platoon, which is an elite unit, part of the 16 Air Assault Brigade. These operators serve as an advance force and carry out dangerous reconnaissance missions. In 2003, he deployed to Iraq and worked in this capacity as a Pathfinder. Nine years later, Craighead completed the British SAS's notorious six-month-long selection program and became a member of the 22nd Regiment. The 22nd Regiment is one of the most elite units in the force. From here, much is unknown about his career in the SAS, as the force is known to be secretive and discreet about their missions. What is known is that years later, while training Kenyan soldiers to fight terrorism, he made four gunmen regret the day that they decided to attack the Doucet D2 hotel complex. None of the terrorists could have possibly known that a professional British SAS soldier was quickly moving toward their position to eliminate them. Wearing body armor, a balaclava, and a pair of jeans, Craighead got to work. He carried a Colt Canada C8 series rifle, which is essentially an AR-15 or M4 slash M16 at its core. The gun was specifically an L119A2, which is a modernized version of the C8 and has a monolithic upper receiver. This serves to make the gun more accurate by zeroing large optics and laser aiming devices. Also featured on the gun was the SIG Romeo 4T optic, which is a premium red dot optic, and a Surefire FA-556A suppressor. Firstly, Craighead helped escort numerous groups of civilians out of the complex. He can even be seen on video footage carrying out wounded people and providing cover for the paramedics. Time after time, he brought people out of harm's way to then turn and head straight back towards the enemy fire. People were amazed by this unknown, masked foreigner who was taking control of the situation and getting all those people to safety. Next, as Kenyan soldiers and police established a perimeter around the compound, he embedded himself within a group of soldiers and started to work, moving through the buildings. Everywhere, people were trapped in rooms waiting to be rescued as they were pinned down by gunfire. However, the soldiers were not able to engage the terrorists directly while administering aid, so Craighead broke off from his group to confront the gunmen alone. More video footage from the scene shows him running away from the friendly soldiers and towards enemy gunfire as he scanned the upper floors of the buildings. Performing a solo sweep of the rest of the complex, Craighead located two of the terrorists, who were now at the back of the compound, and eliminated both of them by himself. Unknown to him and Kenyan authorities at the time, two other terrorists remained active. As the evacuation process continued throughout the day, Craighead continued to help coordinate medical aid and clear floors of the public. However, during the early hours of the next day, January 16th, gunshots and explosions could once again be heard. This time, Kenyan police were able to apprehend the gunmen and announced that the complex was finally secure after the 19-hour siege. Immediately following the attack, no one knew Christian Craighead's identity. Only photos of a masked man aiding people appeared on the internet to give any clues. He became known as Obi-Wan Nairobi, a name which referenced his heroic, selfless actions and concealed identity. A Black Rifle Coffee Company Blackbeard patch on his backpack was the only clue to his identity. Only after he made an appearance on the company's podcast was he finally identified as Christian Craighead. He received the conspicuous gallantry cross for his actions that day and retired from the SAS a year later and wrote a book about his experiences in Kenya, including the infamous incident. The Kenyan government was also praised for its fast response to the attack, which had been coordinated by the Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab. Backed by Al-Qaeda, the Somali terrorist organization had planned the attack as retribution against the United States President Donald Trump because he had formally recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Although close to 700 people were saved during the evacuations, 27 people were killed by the attacks, including many Kenyans, an American man, and a British South African man, and many more were injured. While the response of the Kenyan police and army personnel is worth applauding, it was the actions of a lone British SAS operator who helped save the day. Christian Craighead had prevented more lives being lost with his heroic deeds and had taken the initiative when he had gone off and killed two of the gunmen on his own. Both the Kenyan government and residents of the compound have come forward to shower Craighead with much-deserved praise and thank him for risking his own life to save complete strangers. 
So next time someone blows themselves up in front of a crowded cafe and a small army of terrorists start executing civilians, the world had better hope that there's a British SAS operator around to save the day. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. Play now for free on PC or Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, or previous-gen consoles using the link in the description below to get a massive free bonus pack.